Hello guys, how are you today? Here is a video to show you how to create a USB Linux installation media with Balena Etcher. Yep, to create a USB media to install Linux on your computer. So, if you need to install Linux on your device, here is the step to take. You need to download a linux.iso file, create an installation media with a tool like the one I will show you in this video, and finally boot on that new created media to start the installation. Other tools exist to do this, but I will show you Balena Etcher for this video. It is easy to use, compatible with many Linux distributions ISO file, and it is multi-platform. So let's start. The first step is to download that tool if you don't have it. So I will go to the Balena Etcher website. Here's the website address in the address bar. It's a simple website. We have a green button to download Etcher. As you see, this tool is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. I will begin to show you with the Windows version, but in the end of the video, I will show you how to install and use it on Linux. I invite you to check the video's chapters. So I will click to download the Windows version. Once downloaded, go to the folder where your file was downloaded. In my case, it was downloaded to the download folder. I will double click on the Balina Etcher executable to open it. It is a very simple three-step tool. The first step is to choose the ISO file we want to use to create the USB installation media. So choose the ISO file of the Linux distribution you downloaded and want to install. In my example, it's a Linux Mint ISO file. If, like me, you have this problem on a Microsoft Windows machine, Balena Etcher bug after choosing an ISO file and you cannot do anything, here is the solution. You need to install Visual C++ Redistributable. I will close Balena Etcher. I will open a terminal Windows as administrator. And I will enter that command to quickly install that prerequisite. Once installed, I will open back Balina Etcher. I will do again the first step of choosing my ISO file. As you can see, it now correctly do what it supposes to do after choosing the ISO file. The second step is to choose the USB media you want to use as a Linux media installer. If no USB media is plugged in to your computer, you can plug it now. So I'm going to insert one. And when it appears on Balena Etcher, I can select it. If you have more than one, please select the one you want. But if there are important data on your USB media, save them on another place because these kinds of tools erase all the contents of the USB media. If you have several USB media connected to your machine, be really sure that the correct one is selected at this step. In my case, before using that kind of tool or before working with partition manager tool, I always unplug all unneeded device just to be sure that I won't do anything to them during my configuration. The name and size column are useful to identify which is your good media you want to format and configure with Balena Etcher. And the third step is to launch the process. Click on the flash button to do it. So in the left menu, we see the process's progression. And when it's finished, it will write flash completed. So if you want to make it a second USB key, click on the flash another button. And if not, you can close the tool. It is now time to boot on that USB media. So I will plug that USB media on the machine. I want to boot that ISO file to install Linux. 
So once the USB media is connected to your machine and you reboot it, if your Linux installation menu appears at startup, you have nothing else to do for this part and you can start the installation. But if your computer boot again on your default currently installed operating system, instead of the bootable USB drive, you need to do a small manipulation. You need to interrupt the computer startup and indicate to your computer that you want to start from another device. For this step, it is difficult to provide an exact procedure because it may vary from one computer manufacturer to another. It can even vary from model to another from the same manufacturer. In the case of all my machines at home, it is the F12 button that I need to press, but for other machines, it may be the escape button or the F10 button, for example. So the procedure is to press that interrupt button in the first few seconds when you start your computer. In my case, I will show you from my Lenovo ThinkPad laptop and it is the F12 button. So I will start the computer. I press F12 while it starts. I press F12 several times. So there you go, it says entering boot menu and in the boot menu it offers me several devices available to boot. I will choose my USB drive, so the USB HDD. And there you go, the Linux Mint installation menu appears. And now, to conclude this video, I will quickly show you how to install it on Linux. So we'll go back to the Balena Etcher website. We will go to the same website as I used to download the Windows version. And I will click once again on the Download Etcher button. But this time I will choose the Linux version. Two Linux versions are offered here, the 64-bit version and the 32-bit version for older computers. If you don't know which one you need, I suggest you choosing the 64-bit version. You will have more chance to have the good version for your computer architecture. Well, it's now downloaded, so I'm going to open the file browser to go to the folder where the file was downloaded. In my case, it's in the download folder. I will extract the zip file. And I will double click on the Balina Etcher to execute it. It opens, it is exactly the same interface as the one I showed you in Microsoft Windows earlier. So we will choose an .iso file. Fedora Linux on this example. We will choose the USB media that I want to format and transform into a Linux installation media. And there, I will click on the flash button to start the process. And there, it asked me to enter my user's password. That user must have administrator rights. Once finished, your USB media is ready to use to install Linux. That example was shown on Ubuntu Linux with its GNOME interface. I tried on the KDE interface too with Kubuntu. Here are some tips I want to share about Balina Etcher. Firstly, on Kubuntu, if I double click on it from my file browser, it don't open. The workaround that I found is to open it from a terminal window. but just running it like it don't work too. I tried with sudo to open it with administrator write. It don't work either. As recommended, I tried it with the no sandbox option. It don't work either, the screen stays white. So here how I finally was able to open and use it correctly. So, I will choose my ISO file. I know sometime after this step, nothing may happen and Balena Etcher may freeze. 
On that case, I close it and reopen, and it should now work fine. On my present situation, I didn't have that bug, so I will continue the process. In your case, do you have better tips about using Balena Etcher from Kubuntu? Another tips I want to add, this time it's on a Debian machine with a KDE interface. In this case, Balena Etcher opens correctly without using terminal. But here is a little bug I had. When I clicked on flash, I had this error. I found that it is because no elevation permission screen is shown. Here what I did to be able to use Balena Etcher from Debian KDE. I opened the terminal to install a package. I installed the pkexec package. And now I will try again. And it works, I'm able to create my installation USB media. So with some Linux distribution or some graphical interface, we may have some issue. In your case, did you use Balena Etcher with another operating system? Do you have some tips you want to share? To conclude that video, some Linux distribution have their own tool installed to create a USB installation media. For example, Linux Mint have its tool to create a Linux Mint installation USB media. I tried to create a Fedora installation media from that tool and it seems to work too. I was able to boot from that USB media, but I didn't try to install Fedora to confirm that it all worked fine. Other tools similar to Balena Etcher exist too, Rufus, Ventoy, just to name them. Rufus is very similar to Balena Etcher. You choose a ISO file, your USB device, and start the process. Ventoy is a little different and have something nice. You install Ventoy on a USB media, it creates a folder on that USB media, and after you just have to copy and paste on it all the .iso file you want on that USB media, when you will boot to that device, you will have a menu to choose which .iso file you want to boot. It is very useful if you test a lot of Linux distributions, or if you want a USB media with a lot of live CD and tools available on it. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and it helped you. Please share in the comments your experience with this kind of tools and which one is your favorite. So have a nice day. Bye bye.